Uh, so I'm going to cover two uh, different systems. One is the uh, metrics aggregation system. And the second topic is the monitoring system. Uh, before we uh, discuss the design and implement implementation, we need to understand the need for a metric aggregation system. Uh, we run 25 plus uh, microservices. Uh, that's more than the number of software developers that we have. And uh, we run them on hundreds of uh, servers in cloud. So we want to uh, collect metrics about uh, from these microservices uh, and also metrics about the servers where the application runs, like CPU, memory, etc. Uh, once we collect uh, and aggregate, we want to visualize the metrics. We want to run uh, monitoring on top of the metrics. For example, if average latency of uh, one of my API is greater than X, uh, set an alert. So that's a typical use case, right? So this is the requirement. So the goal is to uh, reliably, scalably uh, aggregate metrics uh, so that uh, we can query the metrics, uh, uh, run monitoring on top of the metrics. So I'll uh, discuss about the goals um, in the later slides. Uh, before that, uh, uh, this is an example uh, sam uh, sample metric request. Uh, that uh, we collect from one of our microservices. Uh, the metric name is make call API. So it's a met metric about uh, the make call API request using which customer can initiate a phone call. Uh, for, the, for every metric, we have a set of tags and set of fields. Uh, the tags captures the uh, dimensions of the metrics. For example, uh, in this metric, uh, we capture a couple of information about the metric, which is the tenant ID. The second is uh, the HTTP response code that we send back to customers. So using tags, uh, you will be able to uh, search metrics. For example, find all the metrics that belongs to specific customer, filter metrics, group metrics. Right? And uh, moving on to the next, uh, uh, next is fields. So fields capture the actual data that, uh, that we are interested in. So in this case, we are capturing the latency of the make call API request in milliseconds. Uh, typically, uh, you do aggregations on field values. For example, uh, find average latency uh, of make call API request for a specific tenant. So that's the difference between tags and fields. Using tags, you'll be able to search the metrics. Uh, and fields are the actual data that, that you want to do aggregations on, like averages, percentiles, etc. Uh, so th these are the functional requir requirements of the metric aggregation system. The metric document should be a JSON, as I discussed in the earlier slide. Uh, user should be able to add any number of arbitrary tags with high cardinality to a metric data point. So to understand what cardinality means, let's take the same example. Uh, we have two uh, tags to this metric data point. Uh, one is the HTTP code. Uh, so the number of unique values for HTTP code is maybe uh, 15 or 20, right? I mean, uh, 2xx, 5xx, 4xx. So at most you will have uh, 20 or 30 uh, unique values. That means the cardinality of uh, uh, the HTTP code tag is low. But when it, when it comes to tenant ID, you can, you can have millions of tenants using your platform. That means you can have millions of unique values for tenant ID. It means the cardinality of uh, tenant ID tag is high. So the implication here is uh, the metric data store that you uh, use for aggregation and persisting your metric data point should support tags with high cardinality so that you'll be able to perform searches efficiently. The second functional requirement is uh, should have rich query capabilities. For example, uh, you should be able to perform various types of aggregations uh, like averages, percentiles, uh, and you should be able to bucketize metrics based on various dimensions like uh, tenant ID, uh, response code, etc. So these are the functional requirements. Moving on to non-functional requirements, the whole system should be reliable. It should be up 24 cross 7. Uh, a single node uh, a crash should not bring down the whole system. And the system should scale. Uh, today I'm ingesting 1,000 metrics per second. Uh, tomorrow I might be handling uh, billions of requests per second. 
the system should automatically scale just by adding more uh, machines to it. And the end-to-end -end latency should be low. I say end-to-end -end latency, it's the time between uh, the point where the metrics is collected uh, from our microservice to the point where the metrics is actually persisted into the metric data store. So the overall latency should be minimal. And the whole pipeline should be flexible. Uh, to give you an example, a couple of years back, uh, uh, I know many uh, many companies are using Graphite as their metric data store. Uh, but uh, today, I guess, uh, I heard that many people are using Prometheus. So what this means is that uh, uh, technologies keep changing. So you should be able to adapt new technologies as per, as per your requirement in future. So the, whole, the pipeline should be flexible enough so that you should be able to plug and play different systems as per your requirement. Uh, so uh, before we uh, move into our design and implementation, some of the ex options that we explored before we implemented our own pipelines uh, are uh, InfluxDB, um, which is a metric data store, uh, Elasticsearch with XPAC license. Uh, I know many people will be familiar with Elasticsearch. Uh, XPAC is a product that's built on top of Elasticsearch that provides uh, metric aggregation and monitoring capabilities. Uh, and Prometheus, uh, Prometheus is a monitoring system. So the difference between InfluxDB uh, and Prometheus is, InfluxDB is more of a data store. At Prometheus, it's more of a monitoring system, uh, which uh, people typically use also as a data store, but it's not uh, suggested for long-term storage. So these are the options that we explored for uh, metrics aggregation and monitoring. Some of the downsides are, uh, uh, it's, it's very expensive. To get an XPAC license or uh, get a license for InfluxDB, uh, it proved uh, very expensive for us. And some other system does not support tax with high cardinality. For example, InfluxDB uh, free version uh, supports max of 10, 10 million series of tax. That means you can't have tax with high cardinality. InfluxDB also has uh, a clustered version uh, which might support more, uh, uh, more time series data. There's always a single point of failure uh, with these systems. For example, Prometheus InfluxDB free version runs on a single node. It means if the node crashes, um, your monitoring system will be down. And it doesn't scale, uh, again, for the same reason, because uh, it runs on a single node. So this is the design uh, that, uh, that we implemented at Exotil. Uh, first, I'll cover the overall design. Uh, and later slides, I will uh, go into individual components and discuss more in detail. So uh, at the left, uh, we have our microservice running on uh, the uh, uh, cloud server. And along with the microservice, we also run other third-party services like uh, uh, Apache HTTPD server. So we want to collect metrics about our microservice. At the same time, we want to collect metrics about the uh, Apache HTTP servers uh, and, uh, and also the, uh, the physical server where the uh, application runs, like CPU, memory stats, etc. So uh, using our telemetry client that we implemented, uh, we push metrics from our microservice uh, to a localhost UDP port where RSS logd listens. RSS logd is a lightweight uh, logger and shipper service which can collect uh, data from multiple input data sources and writes it to multiple uh, output data sources. So in our case, RSS logd listens on a localhost UDP port uh, to which our uh, microservice sends metrics. So RSS logd collects all the metrics that the microservice sends. It uh, batches it, it compresses it, and then it writes it to Kafka. So similarly, to collect uh, uh, server metrics and other uh, third-party service metrics like Apache HTTPD server, uh, we use Telegraph. Telegraph is a metrics collector agent uh, which can collect uh, uh, server stats, and it also has uh, various input plugins using which you can collect uh, uh, metrics about specific services like MySQL, Aerospike, uh, even Elasticsearch. So once it collects uh, in our pipeline, it uh, collects the metrics, uh, it batches the metrics, compresses the metrics, and then writes it to Kafka. So moving on to the next component, uh, now the metrics is written to Kafka. Kafka is a message broker service. 
uh, where multiple producer can produce metrics and multiple consumers can consume metrics from Kafka. In simple terms, you can think of it as a message cube where producers uh, enqueue messages and uh, consumers dequeue messages. In our case, uh, the producers are RSS, LogD, and Telegram. So uh, once metrics is produced, uh, we have a bunch of Logstash instances. Uh, Logstash is again a super service that can read data from uh, multiple input data sources, write, write to multiple uh, output data sources. So in, in, a, in our case, uh, uh, we read it from Kafka and write it to Elasticsearch. So uh, now the metrics is aggregated and persisted in Elasticsearch. It's ready to be queried. We use uh, Grafana for visualization. So you can query um, data from Elasticsearch and visualize metrics in Grafana. For alerting, uh, we use an application called ElastAlert uh, that can again query from Elasticsearch, query metrics from Elasticsearch. And based on the uh, threshold that you define, it sends alerts uh, uh, to your alerting system and we use Swift drops for uh, as our alerting system. Uh, so if you see the overall design, so if you see the overall design, uh, these are producing metrics and these are consuming metrics. Uh, right? Um, so the first component is RSS log. As I said, RSS log is a, a shipper logger service uh, that comes uh, pre-installed with most of the Linux flavors like Ubuntu, CentOS. Uh, it's very robust uh, in our experience. Uh, it consumes very less uh, memory and CPU compared to other shipper services. Uh, Metrics is bashed and compressed at localhost before sending to Kafka. So if you see uh, the design, uh, we ship the metrics to a localhost UDP port. Uh, so the latency is uh, in sending metrics from our microservice is very minimal because we are sending it to a local host uh, and also because we are using UDP which is non-blocking. Um, and once metrics is collected in RSS log D, we also batch us and compress the metrics. Uh, that means uh, we also save on network bandwidth uh, if you have a network bandwidth limitation in your systems. And you can use various compression uh, techniques like LZO is uh, based on your requirement. Uh, so some of the cons are configuring RSS log is a bit painful. Uh, it will take some time for you to get used to it. Uh, moving on to the next component, Telegraph. Telegraph is a metrics collector agent. Uh, so we use Telegraph to collect uh, server metrics like uh, CPU memory and uh, metrics support specific services like MySQL, HTTPD servers. It's very robust and it, it also consumes very less memory and CPU. Uh, it can collect metrics about uh, 80 plus systems. It has predefined input plugins which you can readily use to collect metrics about various systems like MySQL. And it's easy to configure. Moving on to the next component, uh, just Kafka. Uh, it's a highly reliable and scalable message broker service. Uh, it's uh, very reliable because uh, it supports clustering and data replication. Uh, so data written to Kafka will be replicated on multiple nodes. Even if one machine goes down, you will not lose data and the cluster will be up and running. This also implies the, that the metric aggregation system is also reliable because we are using Kafka. It can be scaled to handle millions of writes per second. Uh, this also implies our metrics aggregation system can handle millions of metrics data points per second. It decouples producers and the consumers. Right. So uh, if you look at the design, these are the producers and these are the consumers. So a producer now doesn't need to know who consumed the data because we are using Kafka in the middle. So the advantage here is, um, as I said, uh, uh, maybe in future you might want to replace Elasticsearch with some other metric data store because it offers additional uh, functionality uh, compared to Elasticsearch. So in, in that case, all you have to do is um, configure Logstash to read from Kafka and write to do a different data store. You don't have to touch the producer at all. So uh, this means you are decoupling the producers and consumers. So this makes the whole pipeline flexible so that you can plug and play different components. For example, 
uh, you can read data from Kafka and ingest that into Prometheus if you want if you want to use Prometheus for monitoring. Right? So that's the advantage of using Kafka. And it also enables fault tolerant processing. Uh, let's say Elasticsearch crashes for some reason. So Logstash will not be able to um, write it to Elasticsearch. So in this case, since we are using Kafka, metrics will be queued up. So once the Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch comes back, uh, you, will be, you will be able to uh, read the message from Kafka that's buffered and write it to Elasticsearch. So this enables fault tolerant processing. Uh, some of the cons are, uh, it may not be trivial to operate. Um, you need to understand uh, some of the internals of Kafka uh, and configure your Kafka cluster appropriately before you push it to protection. Some of the Kafka optimization that we did is uh, uh, is the number of partitions. Uh, based on your, uh, so uh, Kafka supports partition. Uh, so you can partition uh, your key and uh, assign it on multiple nodes. Uh, so based on your uh, read and uh, write throughput requirement, you might want to configure the uh, number of partitions appropriately for the message queue. Uh, we also define multiple message queues to categorize and prioritize metrics. For example, uh, we create a different Kafka topic for application metrics and we create a separate topic for uh, uh, server metrics because we want to process them separately. So this is how you can prioritize uh, 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 the metrics in Kafka. Moving on to the next component, uh, which is Logstash. It's again a shipper service which can uh, read data from various sources, uh, process and write to various data sources. Um, the advantage is it's a stateless service. Uh, so you can scale up or scale down the number of Logstash instances based on your metrics ingestion rate. For example, if you are ingesting um, 1000 metrics per second, probably you might just need one Logstash instance. Uh, in a couple of hours, you might be uh, processing uh, 10,000 uh, uh, metrics per second, so you can scale up log session sense so that you can uh, increase your read and write throughput of the uh, of the metrics pipeline. Uh, and the cons are it's uh, it's very heavy on memory and CPU. Uh, in our experience, it sometimes crashed due to out of memory error. So we are not very happy with uh, log stash. In fact, we are uh, uh, looking into replacing log stash with something else, uh, which I'll discuss in the later slides. Next component is Elasticsearch. Uh, we use Elasticsearch as the uh, metric data store where metrics gets aggregated and persisted. So it's a JSON store that supports uh, rich query capabilities. The advantages are uh, it's very reliable as like Kafka, it supports clustering data replication. Uh, it can be scaled to handle millions of writes per second. That also means that our metric aggregation system can scale to uh, handle millions of uh, metric data points per second. Uh, it supports tags with high cardinality, and that's one of our requirement. Uh, it supports uh, rich query capabilities. Uh, for example, uh, it's, it supports uh, metrics aggregation out of the box, like uh, average percentile. Uh, and you can also bucket uh, metrics based on various dimensions, as I mentioned earlier. Some of the cons are uh, uh, the storage is not very optimized for metrics aggregation use case. Uh, for example, uh, let's say you are uh, collecting uh, metric from a specific microservice every second. So over a minute, you will have 60 metric data point, right? Uh, this also means that you will be able to uh, visualize or monitor metric at per second level. Typically for historic data, you don't have to maintain data at per second level. Instead, you want to uh, aggregate the metric per minute level. So what this means is that instead of having 60 metric data point, you will only need one metric data point uh, per minute. So uh, the advantage here is uh, it will reduce the disk space utilization and it might also speed up the queries that you run. Uh, for example, some systems like uh, Prometheus and FlexDB supports this out of the box. This also called, there's a term for it which is called downsampling. Uh, but Elasticsearch does not support downsampling. Uh, primarily because Elasticsearch is uh, uh, not uh, not implemented specifically for metrics aggregation use case. I know many people use Elasticsearch for log aggregation as well. So it doesn't uh, support uh, features specific to metrics aggregation. And as like Kafka, it's not very trivial to operate. Uh, 
uh, before you push it to production, you need to understand the internals and uh, uh, configure it appropriately. So some of the ES optimizations uh, that we have done are, uh, by default, Elasticsearch stores the raw JSON document that we write. For metrics aggregation use case, we don't need the raw JSON document. We just need the aggregated value. So we disable the, uh, the raw JSON document storage. And that significantly saves the uh, disk space uh, utilization. And uh, we enable uh, indexing, uh, searching only on uh, tags, not on fields. As I said, tags are the uh, dimensions of the metric using which you can search the metrics. And fields are the actual data point uh, on which you want to do aggregation. So by enabling indexing only on specific uh, tags, uh, we also increase the uh, right throughput. Because uh, the number of indexes that it maintains is, uh, um, is going to be minimal because we are only going to index tags, not fields. Uh, Elasticsearch, uh, uh, there's a process called compaction, uh, which basically merge uh, all the data segments that it internally writes it to disk. Uh, the reason for compaction uh, happening is uh, it will optimize your searches in Elasticsearch. Uh, but compaction is a very uh, CPU heavy uh, process, so it will uh, significantly increase your CPU load if it runs. Uh, so to, um, to reduce the uh, impact on query searches, we forcefully merge the documents. So there's an API in uh, Elasticsearch called Force Merge, using which you can trigger the compaction process manually. So we trigger the compaction process manually during off peak hours so that it doesn't uh, affect the query traffic during your peak hours. So these are some of the ES optimization that we did. So uh, that's all about the metrics aggregation system that we have built. Now the metrics is aggregated in Elasticsearch. Uh, we uh, use Grafana for visualizing metrics. Uh, Grafana supports Elasticsearch as a data store. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Grafana does not support monitoring. Although it supports monitoring on um, other databases like InfluxDB or Graphite, it does not support monitoring on Elasticsearch data store. So uh, this is how we uh, use Grafana uh, for visualizing metrics that's persisted in Elasticsearch. So if you see the query, uh, we are visualizing a metric called ES client. Uh, as you can see, Elasticsearch also supports wildcard searches. And we are filtering the uh, metrics based on the tag value. Here we are using a service stack to filter the metrics. So we are visualizing uh, only metrics that are uh, ingested from the call ES worker application. And the metric that we are uh, uh, visualizing here is the latency in milliseconds and we are computing average of it. We are also grouping the metric based on the timestamp. Like every, every five minutes or every five seconds, you want to bucketize the metrics and compute aggregation. So moving on to the next topic, which is monitoring. Uh, so first we need to understand the requirements for monitoring. The requirement is uh, we want to query Elasticsearch at a predefined time interval uh, and send alerts if the metric breaches a threshold. To give you an example, uh, for every five minutes, we want to eval evaluate the following rule, which is if average CPU load on server X is uh, greater than or equal to five, send an alert. Right? So this, this is a typical uh, use case for, for many of us. Uh, and as like the metrics aggregation system, the monitoring system should also be reliable and scalable. Uh, for example, if your monitoring system is down, uh, you will not be aware of any downtime, which will result in bad customer experience. So you want your monitoring system should be up and running all the time. And it should also scale. For example, uh, today uh, I am running uh, 10 rules uh, every 5 minutes. Uh, tomorrow I might have uh, 10,000 rules or even 1 million rules. So the system should automatically scale so that it can evaluate all those rules in real time. So uh, for monitoring, uh, we use uh, ELASTALERT uh, application. It's an open source monitoring tool implemented by ELP. Uh, so all it does is it queries Elasticsearch uh, based on a predefined rule that you, uh, that you configured. And if the metric breaches the threshold, it sends alerts to uh, various alerting systems uh, like PagerDuty, VictorOps, 
it can also send an email or even uh, send the information to your custom HTTP endpoint if you have any. So Elastala tool uh, was originally implemented to query logs and send alerts. For example, uh, as you, as many of you might know, Elasticsearch is used for uh, log aggregation as well. So the typical use cases, if there are too many errors in your logs, uh, then send an alert. So that's the original use case for Elastalert. Uh, but we extended Elastalert to support metrics aggregation as well. Uh, it's still a closed source, uh, whatever that we implemented, but I'm planning to uh, put it in our public repo uh, probably by end of next week. So uh, if you want to make use of it, you can. So now we, ha we have this Elastalert application, uh, which runs as expected. Uh, but the problem in hand is we want to reliably, scalably schedule Elastalert, schedule and run Elastalert, right, for uh, thousands of rules that we have. So for that, we use uh, AWS Lambda. Uh, AWS Lambda is a managed AWS service using which you can run your application uh, in a lightweight uh, Docker-like container. So uh, to give you an example, uh, I have one rule that I want to execute every five minutes. For that, I'm going to uh, launch a, lam a Lambda function that runs every five minutes. So you can trigger Lambda function uh, using uh, using variety of events. Uh, one of the event uh, could be a cron event. Uh, on what it does is it triggers your Lambda function uh, every every X time interval. Uh, X is something that you can configure. So I'm going to launch a Lambda function for each of the rules uh, that I that I want to execute in real time. So advantage of using AWS Lambda is it makes the whole uh, the scheduling and execution more reliable and scalable. And this also implies that your monitoring system is reliable and scalable. Uh, AWS Lambda also stores logs for each uh, Lambda function invocation. Uh, so it will be easy for you uh, to debug uh, any issues with uh, Elastic Alert, Elastic, Elastic Alert if any. Uh, some of the advantages are uh, it's a stateless service. Uh, it stores all the uh, alert information in Elasticsearch itself. So it doesn't maintain state uh, uh, by itself. For example, uh, the last known alert state for a specific rule is stored in, Elast in Elast Elasticsearch itself. So that Elast alert doesn't have to maintain any states about the alerts. Uh, some of the cons are uh, uh, deploying new rules to AWS Lambda is not straightforward. Uh, so we have built our own uh, deployment uh, system around uh, deploying new rules to uh, Elastalert uh, in AWS Lambda. So you, if, if you want to use Elastalert in AWS Lambda, so you might also have to build your own deployment system around it. Uh, so that's about the monitoring system. Uh, now we have, uh, we have this uh, metrics aggregation monitoring system uh, that's reliable and scalable. But we want to monitor the metrics aggregation system uh, itself. So that, for example, if Kafka node goes down, uh, you want to get an alert about it. So for that, uh, we, we installed Telegraph, which is the metrics collector agent, uh, on each of the components like Kafka, log slash Elasticsearch, uh, so that can collect metrics about these uh, systems. Uh, of course, we, we don't want to send the metrics to the same metrics aggregation system. Uh, that's going to introduce cyclic dependency. right? So uh, for that, we uh, use InfluxDB as the uh, metric data store where metrics gets ag aggregated. So once metrics gets aggregated, uh, we use Grafana for visualization and monitoring. Uh, fortunately, uh, Grafana supports monitoring on InfluxDB data store. So we made use of that uh, to monitor our metrics pipeline. Uh, some stats uh, about, about our production setup. Uh, we run a three-node Kafka cluster. Uh, it's a two-core mission with uh, instance store SSD. Uh, it's a local SSD attached. Uh, we have a two-node uh, Logstash instance, again a two-core mission. For Elasticsearch, it's a four-node cluster, again a two-core mission with the instance store SSD. And this is our current traffic. The metrics ingestion rate is uh, uh, 1,50,000 per minute. Uh, which is uh, roughly around 22 GB per day. Uh, number of search queries that we run at a shard level is uh, 15,000 per minute. 
uh, and we, re we retain uh, data about the metrics for the last 70 days. Um, and the older metrics, uh, we snapshot uh, 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 and store it in S3. So there's a sna snapshot and restore API in Elasticsearch using which uh, you can snapshot the, uh, the metrics uh, in various uh, data sources like S3 uh, and other remote storages. And if you want to restore older metrics, you can restore it as well. There's an API for it. Uh, the disk utilization is uh, 1.3 TB across four Elasticsearch nodes. Uh, at, and at any point in time, we store around uh, 7 billion metric data points uh, in our Elasticsearch cluster. So for deployment, uh, we use Terraform for uh, managing resources in AWS. We are hosted in AWS. And for uh, uh, deploying services, we use Ansible Playbook. Uh, and you can download Ansible Playbook for uh, Kafka, Elasticsearch, Logstash from uh, Ansible Galaxy, which is a repository for Ansible Playbooks. So uh, some of the future improvements that uh, that we are working on is uh, we want to replace Logstash with Elastic uh, with RSS Log. Uh, with the recent version of uh, RSS Log, it supports uh, reading data from Kafka and writing to Elasticsearch, and that's what we need. Um, uh, in our experience, RSS Log is much more reliable on, uh, than, uh, compared to Logstash, so we want to use RSS Log for uh, Logstash. And uh, one of our requirement is, uh, uh, for example, uh, we make phone calls and SMSs, right? Uh, in some of the metric data points, we also uh, add the phone number uh, to as a, as a tag to metric data point. Uh, but we want to collect uh, more metadata about a phone number. For example, the operator details, uh, the circle, uh, the phone number belongs to, etc. Uh, of course, we don't want to uh, collect all these data at the microservice which is uh, processing the call because that's going to add significant overhead to the microservice itself. So instead of adding it at the microservice, we want to uh, add this metadata to every metric data point at a later stage in the pipeline. Uh, for example, a log stash after reading from Kafka, uh, it can read the metric data point, add metadata by fetching those metadata from multiple external data sources, uh, decorate the metric data point and then ingest it into ES. Uh, so we are working on a prototype for it. Uh, the third requirement is we want to have anomaly detection support in ElastAlert, and we are also working on this. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, time for questions. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, that's a, that was a nice talk. Um, thanks for yeah. that. So I have uh, uh, two questions. Uh, one is about the log stash. So uh, we also architected a similar uh, pipeline. And uh, why you choose uh, uh, chose log stash in first hand? Like, was it because it came along with the Elk stack, or yeah. because I noticed uh, you had a structured uh, logging? I mean, structured uh, logs. Correct. So you don't need to transform any logs. That's correct. So, so uh, we chose Logstash because uh, the integration with Elasticsearch was uh, good with Logstash compared to other shipper service. And uh, we are not aware of the pitfalls that we experienced after pushing to production. Uh, so that's why uh, we uh, chose Logstash in the first place. Uh, but as I said, uh, we are planning to replace Logstash with RSS log. Since there's no processing involved, it's already a structured JSON document. Uh, we can replace Logstash with uh, RSS log, which can read data from Kafka and write to Elasticsearch. Okay, uh, one more question. How you maintain uh, your uh, index uh, in uh, Elasticsearch? So you said uh, we'll be getting like... Hey, uh, uh, the speaker will be available offline. So yeah. there are other questions. If there are no more questions, we'll come back to you. Okay. Or you can catch them after the talk. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hi. Uh, uh, I have three questions actually. I will combine all of them. Uh, one is about ES fields versus tags, right? Yeah, it's about performance. You said you improve tag. So the number of let's say right now you have twenty five plus services. It can increase to let's say forty services, fifty services, hundred services, sure. and the, each team wants to create maybe their own tags. Correct. Wouldn't that increase the indexing load on the Elasticsearch? 
related to performance? Uh, it's going to increase your uh, indexing uh, load, but uh, you can scale up your uh, your the entire pipeline uh, as per your requirement. Uh, I think the the load is going to be high on Elasticsearch, uh, given that you will have uh, many different tags for different data points. But you can shard your uh, uh, data in Elasticsearch such a way that uh, based on your read and write throughput requirement, um, you distribute the data across different nodes. Did I answer your question? Hi. Uh, I was looking to understand a little better about this anomaly detection that you mentioned. Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm not an expert uh, in anomaly detection. Uh, so uh, the thing that we want to implement is there are different uh, algorithms that are proposed for anomaly detection metrics. I think there's uh, something called ASTAR algorithm. Uh, there's someone from eBay who proposed uh, a static anomaly detection uh, algorithm using which uh, you can detect anomalies in a metric. Uh, for example, there's uh, uh, you, you're monitoring latency metrics uh, for a specific uh, API. Uh, you want to find anomalies in the latency. For example, only at a specific period of time, uh, the latency is uh, kind of uh, spiky. And that's an anomaly compared to your average latency, right? So that's an anomaly in your system. So you want to understand why there's a spikiness uh, during that particular period, uh, uh, period of time uh, during, during a day. So that's an anomaly and that you want to detect first and based on the anomaly, you might want to dig deeper uh, by uh, viewing uh, the subsystem metrics like uh, what is the latency of uh, my MySQL queries, what's the latency of my web services, uh, right? So that's, that's what anomaly detection means and uh, we are planning to implement uh, the already proposed algorithm um, by, by many people, <laughs> by many data scientists. So, so yeah, that's what we are working on. Hello, hi. Um, for the backend um, databases, right, uh, have you explored um, something like OpenTSDB? So, sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, 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 for the backend databases you mentioned, um, you're using uh, um, Prometheus, InfluxDB, and a bunch of other stuff you were um, testing and, right? So have you tried to use something like um, OpenTSDB? Uh, we explored uh, OpenTSDB as well uh, uh, before we chose Elasticsearch. Uh, again, with OpenTSDB, um, um, when we compare OpenTSDB with Elasticsearch, the query capability is much more richer in Elasticsearch compared to OpenTSDB. For example, uh, I think OpenTSDB normalizes all your tags into a single in, in a single metric data point. For example, if you want to search based on different tags, it's 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 going to be quite complex with the TSDB. Just because it's because uh, that's how TSD, OpenTSDB stores the information in your data store. Uh, but but with Elasticsearch, it it supports. Uh, uh, free text search that's not uh, really needed for uh, uh, metrics aggregation use case, but you can slice and dice m uh, metrics based on various dimensions, uh, and that's what uh, Elasticsearch provides, and that's why we chose Elasticsearch. Uh, in your slide, you have mentioned send metrics. Yeah. Okay, that is a part of API, or th through some other medium, you are getting that feedback of metrics. So my point, my question is, is this your API is a sending metrics as a call or how, how it is maintained, this metrics? So uh, we send metrics from our microservices uh, to a localhost UDP port and we have implemented a telemetrics library in various languages that we use. And all the library does is uh, it uh, gets the metrics from the microservice and it ships it to um, a localhost UDP port where access log D listens. Yeah, it's, it's local. The reason being, we, we don't want to add uh, any delay in sending telemetrics to the actual uh, API request. Right? For example, if you are directly shipping the metrics to Kafka, uh, that's a remote uh, uh, remote call to Kafka, and that's going to add a significant latency to your uh, to your API request. And since we're using uh, UDP port, which is non-blocking, uh, the latency will be very minimal. Even the any failures. Uh, in the upstream uh, services, uh, 
uh, it will not be affected. Uh, the microservices will not be affected. Thanks. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, one, is there any replication? Yeah. Is there any replication for the Elasticsearch nodes what you have configured the four nodes? Because that becomes a single point of failure. Right? Oh, so, sorry, sorry, it's not very audible. It's better? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So is there any replication for the Elasticsearch nodes what you have configured? If Even if the one of the node goes off, the data is lost, right? So is there any replication configured? Yeah, yeah. That's the first question. And second question, uh, when the primary persistence goes off, the logging or uh, the alert will be like flooded, right? How is there any alert folding which you have configured in your systems? Like there will be thousands of alert coming. We don't know where the actual error is. Like is there, uh, was that uh, configured, the alert folding concept? Uh, alert what? Sorry. Alert folding. Like uh, basically, if okay. one sure. point can trigger multiple alerts, right? Sure. So if that, that's the question. Yeah. yeah, to answer your first question, uh, yeah, we configured data replication in Elasticsearch. Uh, and Elasticsearch supports it out of the box, it uh, supports clustering. Uh, so, for example, in our case, uh, our, the replication factor is three. So, even if you lose one mission, uh, the data will not be lost and the cluster will be up and running. Um, so the second question is uh, whether ELAS alert support um, alert folding. Uh, I don't think it supports <laughs> right now. So uh, if you need that feature, we, we might have to implement it. But as I said, um, you can also plug in uh, other systems uh, that supports these features. Probably Prometheus might be supporting alert, uh, alert folders, right? So you can uh, plug in Prometheus uh, to read data from Kafka and uh, uh, you know visualize or monitor your metrics in Prometheus. So the same pipeline can be used for other use cases as well. Uh, we are using for metrics aggregation, uh, but you can use it for your logs, even for your event streams. Thank you, guys. <laughs>